So we've already seen examples of the main function. This is a function that is existent in all of your C-sharp console-based applications. And this is one that is written for you specifically by C-sharp. And you can include all kinds of different statements within that main function. But again, as we talked about, you want to start breaking up the functionality of your application into these discrete pieces. And this is where functions come into play and in that they allow you to go ahead and do that. What we're going to do here is create a non-returning function that will concatenate two strings and then display the result to the screen. So anytime you create a function, it's always a good idea to give the function a relatively friendly name and one that describes what that function is going to do. So in this case, let's go ahead and create the function. Now, we're going to use a couple of different keywords here, mainly because of the way that we're dealing with this class program and static void main. We're going to do a couple of keywords here that we'll need to put in place to make sure that our function works correctly and that it actually is available from different components or different areas of our program. We'll use a keyword called public, which means that almost anybody can gain access to this functionality as long as they're accessing our code. So public starts it off and says that this is our scope modifier, which determines who can or who cannot see this specific function that we're going to create. Now this one we said is a non-returning, which means that we're not going to return any values. So immediately after the public, we include a keyword called void. And void means nothing. You can think of in the English language, void means a void, which basically means there's nothing there. So if we put it at the beginning of our function, it means that's the return type. So void means we're not returning anything. And we said that we wanted to concatenate two strings and display the results. So in this case, we are going to write a function called concatenate. And we could give it all, add on to this name if you wanted to. We could determine, you know, concatenate names, concatenate whatever it is that we want this function to do. But concatenate is fine for now. And when we create a function, it's going to expect us to potentially provide something called arguments. And arguments are the data that we will use within this function to do something or to perform something. And in this case, we have created one called concatenate. We've got the parentheses, and we said that we want to concatenate two strings. So that gives us a clue that we want to input string values. So string is a data type. We're going to declare a variable called first. And all of our parameters for our functions are separated by commas. So string first means that we're going to pass in one string value. And then string last means we'll pass in a second string value. So in this case, we're only going to concatenate two strings. The function will only accept two arguments, one for first and one for last. This could be somebody's name. It could be anything at all. It doesn't really matter. These names are arbitrary, and they'll be used within the function. Once we've started with the header portion of our function, which is essentially this public void concatenate string first, like all things in C Sharp, we want to surround it with curly braces which forms the body of our function. And now within the body of the function, we will actually write code that does what we want it to do. And in this case, we said we want it to concatenate two strings. So C Sharp provides a couple of different ways for us to do this. I'm going to choose the simplest one for now, which is just going to overload the addition operator or the plus operator. So we're going to create a new string value. And this way here, so we're going to concatenate the first and we're going to concatenate the last. So we can call this whole if we want to. If we were doing names, we could call this full name. You know, again, the naming of your variables is entirely up to yourself. So we'll say string whole equals first plus last. And then we end our C-sharp statements with a semicolon. And now we have created the functionality to concatenate those two strings together. We also said that we wanted it to just display the results on the screen. So in this case, we'll put in a console.writeLine statement. And a console.writeLine means take the value and output it to our console window, in this case, which is the command line window. And we want to output the variable whole, which will output that value to the screen itself. So we have this function declared and created, but right now we have no way of calling it. We call a function from within another function, or typically from the starting of the program. So in this case here, we're going to call the concat function. And all we simply have to do is use the name. And actually, Visual Studio is not finding that name right now because of the fact that 
this main method is using a static keyword, um, and it all deals with how we work with these modifiers within the classes. And because this is static, it only wants to see other static methods and values. So we're going to change this to a static void concatenate. And now it sees it, right? So now it knows that concatenate is there, but it's got an error because we haven't provided any values. We need to provide two string values. And in this case, we will provide a string value, and because these are strings, we're going to have to delineate them with double quotes. So the first one that we will pass in will be, let's just make it simple, and we'll just call it first. I'm going to include a space in first because we don't want the two words to be mashed together. And just like in the function header, we have to separate things with the comma, and you'll see that Visual Studio's IntelliSense is helping us along. It's telling us what it is it's looking for and we will put last in here, and again, we end with a semicolon. So now what's taking place is that when we execute this application, C Sharp will call the concatenate method, pass it in the two words first and last, and within the concatenate method, we will add those two strings together to create one longer string and output it to the screen. Let's go ahead and run with Control F5. And you can see that indeed we output first, last. So the function did exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, we talked a little bit about creating the functions and saying that they should perform discrete pieces of functionality, makes it easier for debugging, etc., and that they should only do what we intend them to do. And if that's the case, then this line here should also not be in that concatenate function because concatenate is only designed to concatenate the two strings. I put it in here just for the purposes of demonstrating how we can do something within a function and yes, it's perfectly legal to have only one line of code within a function, and that's all. That's not a waste of space. It's not a waste of programming. That's just the proper way of doing it. If that concatenate function is designed to concatenate, that's all that should be there. This can actually be taken out and put into another function called display string, as an example. And then within concatenate, if we want it to, we could call display string or we could come back up here to main and call display string after we're done with it. So that's an example of creating a method. I'm just going to comment this out because we don't want it executing when we create the second one. So we've created that function, and that function is designed to do one thing, and it did it. But it didn't return any value, right? So all it did was it simply executed it, accepted two arguments, did something, and output the result to the screen.